After Ghana, led by Osaji for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, gained independence from the British in 1957, the country's industrial sector was underdeveloped and contributed very little to the economic growth of the country. The colonial rulers had created an economic system heavily dependent on manufactured products from abroad because their main objective was the extraction of raw materials from the Gold Coast to the colonial metropolis. Local roads and railway lines only targeted rich resource regions. Dr. Kwame Nkrumah set out to create a sustainable and independent economy. His main objective was to extensively reduce the dependency on imported goods, transform the industrial structure by creating more manufacturing industries that will satisfy the basic needs of Ghanaians, create jobs and break the vicious cycle of poverty. The Nkrumah-led government focused on the development of large-scale manufacturing industries owned and managed by the state. Ghana began a number of state industries that will produce goods ranging from cement, steel, roofing sheets, glass, jute, matches, sugar, pepper, flour, tomatoes, beef, shoes, and many more. In today's video, we take a look at the state of some of these factories. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, click on the subscribe button, like, share, and leave your comments below. The Aborso Glass Factory was set up in 1996 at the cost of 9 million Ghana City. The company was situated in Aborso, a town near Takwa, in the western region of Ghana, that was also known for its gold and manganese deposits. The factory was a major manufacturer of glass and a supplier of bottles for the beverage industry. The factory is said to have employed over 500 residents from Aborso and neighboring communities with a yearly output of 18 million bottles, 2 million units of tableware, and 10 million square feet of sheet glass and louver glass. The prolific factory, which was once the leading glass and bottle producer in West Africa, has been abandoned for decades due to financial constraints. The youth of the town are calling on the government to revamp the factory as their only source of livelihood has now become illegal mining, also locally known as Kalamse. The Bonsa Thai factory was established in 1963 under the import substitution industrial strategy. The factory, which is located at Bonsaso in the western region of Ghana, was to produce vehicle tires for the local automobile assembly industry and the mines. The factory was strategically placed in Bonsaso due to its vast rubber plantation stretching from the western region to the central region. The factory, which had a rated production capacity of 1,500 tires per day and about 420,000 tires per annum, has been defunct for decades. After Firestone Ties, which is a global brand, sold a 60% share back to the government, the plant remained inactive and abandoned. Report from 2012 by the Ghana Rubber Estates Limited suggests that Ghana exports about 40,000 tons, which is 95% of its rubber production. Ghana was once a major manufacturer of matches. Ghana was producing matches for several African countries, including Togo. Liberia, Niger, Nigeria, Mauritania, Benin, and other countries, bringing in large income of foreign exchange. The company was established in Achimkede in the eastern region under the name Ghana Match Factory Corporation. It produced 1,440 boxes of matches daily. The company was strategically placed in Kede to exploit the timber resources in that area and create employment for its residents. Today, the factory is in total shambles and has completely deteriorated. It has been left dormant for years. The Wenchi Tomato Processing Factory, located in what was then the Brongahafo region, is known for the processing and packaging of tomatoes and other vegetables such as okra and garden eggs. The factory was established in the 1960s under the Nkrumah regime. It was estimated to have employed over 1,000 people and also served as a ready market for the tomato farmers which encouraged individuals in the community to enter into agriculture. Sadly, the factory has been inactive for decades. It was a huge blow to farmers and the workers whose livelihood depended on it. A region once noted for its mass production of canned tomatoes was brought down to its knees. 
between the years 2000 and 2007, the factory would reopen again but will later shut down due to an unreliable supply of the right tomato breed for processing. After Nkrumah's government was toppled down, most of the factories constructed in this time suffered the same fate. Factories like the Bolgatanga Meat Factory, the Palugu Tomato Factory, the Solpon Ceramic Factory, the Commander Sugar Factory, the Paper Convention Company, the Cotton Factory in Tamale, the Jute and Shoe Factory in Kumasi, and many others fell. Some argue that the factories were struggling and would have eventually collapsed. Others also blame it on Nkrumah's socialist vision and assert that state-owned industries are not sustainable. Yet the fact still remains the same, that today, our markets are flooded with the same foreign imported goods we once manufactured and exported. Why is it far-fetched to revive these factories? If you enjoyed this video, click on the subscribe button, like, share and leave your comments below. Thank you.